Good morning and welcome. I'm Randy Zook, President and CEO of the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. Before we begin the program, let me recognize a handful of dignitaries who have joined us today, all of whom have been strong supporters of this work and these partner organizations. First of all, Congressman French Hill. I wish all of you could have heard his off-the-cuff remarks about uh, this whole program just at a breakfast meeting this morning. He absolutely nailed it. Thankfully, we got video, French, so we've preserved you. Senator Jane English, uh, the godmother of all things workforce in Arkansas. Dr. Sharice Childers, where is Sharice? Right here. With the Arkansas Department of Workforce Services. Mike Preston with the Arkansas De Secretary of the Arkansas Department of Commerce and Stephen Sandher, President of Associated General Contractors of America. Let's thank all of them for being with us. And of course, Senator Bozeman and Governor Hutchinson are on my left and right, and you'll hear from them shortly. We also have a number of members of the Arkansas State Legislature. We have administrators, principals, and teachers from across the state, and a number of lucky students from the Little Rock School District who got to come share this time with us instead of grinding it out in a classroom. They were reluctant to come, but we talked them into it. A little more than three and a half years ago, our organization and its generous partners launched a first of its kind statewide grassroots effort to change the conversations about exceptional career opportunities in Arkansas's construction, manufacturing, and transportation industries. The Be Pro Be Proud mobile workshop on your right, we call that 1.0, was the expression of that effort, bringing to the doorsteps and classrooms of students, parents, and teachers 12 high-wage, high-skilled professions in greatest demand, yet going largely unfilled for lack of qualified candidates. The workshop was designed to combine hands-on simulators and interactive experiences with testimonials and industry-specific information to fire young people's imaginations to the real opportunities in today's workplace. Since the wheels first turned, the mobile workshop and its dedicated team, Scott Calloway, tour manager, and Chris Rose, tour driver, have traveled nearly 100,000 miles making 450 tour stops in 250 cities and towns across the state. This team has directly interacted with over 60,000 junior high, high school, and post-secondary students, parents, teachers, and community leaders, inspiring many of them, approximately 15,000, to consider a different path to opportunity. Within the original workshop were six R, six simulator stations, touching on career opportunities identified by company members as those in highest demand. While effective, these interactions lean heavily on imagination and the storytelling capabilities of our capable team. But with this launch today, that will no longer be necessary. Behind me sits BPRO 2.0, the new and vastly improved mobile workshop. At four times the size, this new workshop utilizes driving simulators, hands-on tools, and augmented and virtual reality systems to put visitors directly into these careers. I'm seriously considering parking it at the state fair and charging 20 bucks an hour for people to go through this. I think it would outpull the Ferris wheel. It showcases three newly added career fields, expanding on the 12 that we had previously promoted and adding content directly related to opportunities in telecommunications and electric utility sectors. Today, we also launch a new Be Pro Be Proud work website. Users will immediately experience improved functionality and expanded content. Our partners will have access to a growing database of candidates who have self-identified as having an interest in learning more about one or more of the training and career paths this effort promotes. None of this could have been possible without the enthusiastic support of a large group of public and private partners. 
On the placards of each side of the stage and on the backs of your programs, you'll find a listing of those who have helped make this possible. Our special thanks today goes to Union Pacific Railroad, the overall tour sponsor for 2019 and 20. You'll hear in a minute from Scott Moore, Senior Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer of UP. And finally, let me give all the credit deserved for this project to Andrew Parker. He has tirelessly and persistently raised the money, picked most of your pockets to make this all possible, and has done one whale of a job. Also, I'd like to say a special thanks to our marketing partner, Stone Ward. There are several of their team here. They were instrumental in making all of this come together over the last three and a half years or so. And now to begin the program, let me welcome the Honorable Frank Scott, Jr., Mayor of the City of Little Rock, to the podium to express his greetings. Well, it's always a pleasure to be in the midst of a, someone, a great leader like a Randy Zook, and what he's done in, in tireless efforts for many, many years to bridge the gap between education, workforce development, investment and training, in the private sector. And this is a great example, and we are especially happy here in the city of Little Rock to be the home base uh, for this very much so, a statewide program on workforce development, investment, and training, uh, the true B Pro, B Pro Out 2.0. Uh, as you know, that Andrew has picked the pockets of many of you. He's going to probably continue to do that. Uh, we want you to know that this investment right now, as what you're putting into this particular project, is going to really forward the future of workforce development, investment, and training as we move forward together. And because we have many individuals that are between this sweet spot of 18 to 24 that are looking for a new career, a new aspect in life, and many times it's about exposure. And that's what you're going to receive from this particular project, is more exposure to our youth, our young adults, as we're all trying to figure out new career pathways, and this is a great example of that, connecting those dots. So we want to say thank you on behalf of the City of Little Rock on being the home base for this statewide program. We want to commend Andrew Parker and Randy Zook and many of those public-private partners that are putting together to shoot and show what a public-private partnership really is. And this is an example of that, and we want to continue to multiply this and move forward. Thank you so much, and welcome to the city of Little Rock. Me. Well, I'm going to do it. Well, I think it's Rachel. It's Rachel? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Here I am. Good morning. I'm Rachel Petrie. I am the consumer publications publisher for Arkansas Business Publishing Group. Since the launch of Be Pro, Be Proud, I've been longing for a way for our company to plug in to the state's workforce development effort in some way. As the publisher of the state's business magazine, it seemed a natural fit to partner with the state chamber to combine our resources to enhance the purpose of Be Pro, Be Proud's amazing initiative. In August of 2017, our CEO and owner, Mitch Bettis, and I met with Randy and Andrew to get an update on how things were going so far with Be Pro, Be Proud. We learned that the truck had made dozens of stops on dozens of campuses, welcoming hundreds of students aboard to try their hand at some of the interactive activities. But what really resonated with me was the way that Randy lit up when he was telling stories about young professionals that were thriving in these careers as industrial maintenance techs, diesel technicians, electricians, and welders. He told us a story of one young man who was just 19 who was working at Bad Boy Mowers in Batesville as a technician. Because that man had achieved his associate's degree concurrently while he was in high school, he was able to get a job right out of high school and was making nearly $60,000 a year, was able to buy his own home. And that's really when it clicked for me. That's how we could plug in. We tell stories, and these stories needed to be told. Young people of Arkansas needed to know that the four-year college path may not be the right one for everyone, that if they didn't want to sit at a desk every day, they could get trained quickly and at a fraction of the cost hit the ground running in a career they loved and afford a lifestyle they never thought possible. They could buy that truck they've always dreamed of, own a home, start a family, 
while many of their four-year peers were still in school studying and incurring more debt. Last year, with the support of the Chamber and many of you here today, including the Department of Commerce, Tyson Foods, Pace Industries, and many others, we launched Arkansas Next Pros magazine. In it, we highlight 15 young professionals who are thriving in these careers, lifting them up as the leaders that they are in industry. We distributed that issue to every 8th, 11th, and 12th grade student in the state, in all 75 counties. And I gotta tell you, the feedback has been absolutely tremendous. We have guidance counselors telling us that they learned just as much, if not more, than the students did, therefore felt more equipped to recommend these careers to them. Teachers told us that students who typically would zone out during the traditional college prep period of class finally saw a path for themselves that didn't include four more years of studying. Today we launch the second annual issue of Arkansas Next Pros. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And in it we highlight 17 young professionals who are thriving in the careers. Several of them are here today and I'd like to recognize some of those guys including Trey Watts of Carrington Electric in Pine Bluff. Trey, can you please stand? Everybody give Trey a hand. Also, we have with us Aaron Smith of the Intimidator Group in Batesville. Aaron, where are you? All right, there you go. Thank you guys for letting us share your stories. Um, and if you haven't already, please read through some, some of the stories that are larger than life blown up over there and take a copy of the magazine home, of course, after you've had a chance to check out this incredible vehicle. Um, some of my team will be outside handing out magazines, so please take them home, share them with the young people in your communities and also their parents. Um, and we really appreciate Randy and Andrew for including us today and trusting us with part of your message. Um, I'd also like to thank the governor and the Department of Education for your continued support of Arkansas Next brand. We really, truly are all in this together to create a bright future for our state. Thank you. Well, thank you. I was so excited I couldn't wait to get up here. I'm Scott Moore with Union Pacific Railroad, and it's my privilege and pleasure to be here for a great day in Arkansas and a great day in Little Rock. And I'm here today on behalf of my CEO, Lance Fritz, and the almost 40,000 employees at Union Pacific, a few of which are here in the room today. And so the UP folks just stand up here. There's, we have workforce resources, we have trainmen, we have mechanics, we have, this is the folks that make the UP run. Thank you. That's one of those things, a company like Union Pacific was made by Abraham Lincoln's hand in 1862, 157 years ago. The first predecessor of Union Pacific came to Little Rock in 1873. And if you've read about the railroading then and now, it was a lot about hard work, a lot about hard work outdoors, a lot about uh, uh, making the next mile, getting the train there on time, making the customer happy. And when you talk about the work that, let's say, a mechanic did, for the last 150 years, that's changed and changed over time. Though even yet today, there's some certain basic things to get things tight, but there's a lot of computers going on there to make that locomotive work. Um, same thing if you're a, 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 a locomotive engineer. I mean, obviously there's the throttle there's the key, and getting at the notch eight gets the product delivered on time, but there's a whole bunch of information coming through the computer you have to know about. Um, and if you're a, a track gang, doing work. I mean, obviously there's a, a lot of physical work there, but in the end, a lot is about technology, making sure the track is safe, the track bed is safe, the tie is safe, to make sure that the product can be delivered on time. So it's all of that transitionary work that is really captured in the be pro, be proud thing, to understand that work is ever changing. And uh, that's why it a, was, a, was a great thing when I heard of, we heard about this particular project. You know, Union Pacific, We've had a foundation for uh, uh, almost 60, 65 years. Uh, the original foundation literally was a, a court case, is can a corporation give money for community good? Think about that being a court case, but that's what it was. But our foundation was focused on many things and therefore 
focused on nothing, but did a lot of important things across our 23 state system. So a few years back, we said we're going to focus our efforts on a few things. One thing is safety. Safety is in the DNA of Union Pacific, keeping our employees safe they go, so they go home at night, keeping our community safe so we deliver our customers' product on time. Safety is important. So that, we're going to find ways to help communities be safer. Second thing, to be a vibrant and successful community, you have to have community spaces, something to do, something to go to. Railroads have a long history with our National Park Service, and so uh, on the national level, national parks, but a variety of community spaces that bring culture, openness to all sectors of society as things we, we do. And lastly, we struggle with this because it's one of those things where our communities, 7,000 communities in 23 states said, well, what you, uh, our number one thing is workforce development. What can Union Pacific do to help our communities in workforce development? That's one of those things, well, you know, that's kind of a global hunger cure for cancer thing. There's so much there, what can you do? But we decided that uh, that was going to be the third pillar of our community ties giving program. And so since that time, we've given millions of dollars across our system that have created in thousands of jobs, in trained jobs in minority communities, uh, found looking for women railroaders out there for diversity, and we're proud of our efforts there. But this particular program, the Be Pro, Be Proud, one of the great things about it here in the state of Arkansas, where our 2,000 employees are, is that uh, this particular uh, effort takes it all across the state, all across to uh, uh, communities all across Arkansas. You know, I'm here from Omaha, Nebraska today, where our headquarters is. You know, 50 years ago, I spent the night in Omaha, Arkansas, which is, those of you who know Omaha, Arkansas, about 157 people, at least by Wikipedia. Um, now, my town that I came from was only slightly bigger than that, a little town called Benedict, Nebraska. I said I was second in my class, but not in the top 10%. There's only 10 in my high school class. Uh, but it's one of those things that those small towns are the backbone of middle America and backbone of a place like Arkansas. And it's uh, folks like that that I want to introduce next from a small town called Gravette. Is that how I say it right? Am I saying it right? Well, your governor, Asa Hutchison, has been a great friend of Union Pacific. Um, at the beginning of his term, uh, the CEO and I went into his office and uh, talked about business development. His vision for Arkansas, what can Union Pacific do? It's one of those things where we said, you know, call me if we can do anything. And so uh, the next thing that uh, uh, came about, the, uh, the governor called in about a month on the Sun Paper thing. I was, we were at an event in Omaha, and the local guy called, the governor wants Lance to call him in, in an hour. And we did, and ultimately the Sun Paper project, it's still, still going there, uh, we helped make that happen. So it's one of those things where that passion for delivering economic development for the state of Arkansas is what we've seen with your governor. I've been in meeting meetings with the other governors across the country where my CEO said, watch out for, if you don't take care of your business, Arkansas is going to come get it. And uh, he's done a great job of doing that. And uh, small town, uh, Arkansas, uh, that's done great things for your state. It's my privilege to introduce Governor Ace Hutchinson. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, and thank you for working that particular weekend uh, extra hours so we could uh, get it right on that project. Union Pacific, your leadership has always been responsive, and your partnership in this endeavor has been uh, very important. Ladies and gentlemen, I remember four years ago, uh, Randy Zook and his team came into my office and presented this idea of be pro, be proud. And of course, I immediately recognized this as really meeting a great need of our state. And I applaud uh, the state chamber uh, for their leadership on this, Randy, uh, for making it happen and making it a reality. And uh, shortly thereafter, uh, they brought this uh, vehicle in and I went out and I got to tour it and take some pictures in it. And uh, then right before I came up here today, before we started the program, I went into the new Be Pro, Be Proud. And I'll just tell you, this is bigger and it's better. And uh, it's going to produce uh, incredible results uh, for our state. And since uh, this was initiated, the partners have uh, joined in it. Uh, the Delta Regional Authority is always a key partner. Our Department of Commerce through Career Ed and AEDC, 
Union Pacific again. Those partnership have helped uh, carry out this mission. And the need is very great. Whenever you talk to industry anecdotally, you know that when you have a 3.4% unemployment rate, they need workers. And in fact, statistically, 82% of manufacturers uh, indicate that there is a labor shortage, 82%. And so the need is great for those to be trained, to be skilled, to understand that there is an opportunity for them. And I believe in college. I support our higher education. And we can't have a conflict in this state, and there should not be, and I don't believe there is. But we need to understand fundamentally that not everybody is going to go to college. Not everybody is going to get a four-year degree, and they need to see options that they can have and that it has meaning and dignity and honor and that they can provide for a family. And it's about messaging. It's about giving hope. It's about believing in your future and giving the options that work for you. And those paths take different directions. They might be in career education and they shift over to a two-year and a four-year degree but they still have the opportunity to work with their hands. So this gives more options that are out there and creates that skilled workforce. This first mobile workshop has been pointed out, had 450 stops, 250 cities, and 60,000 students have been touched by this first original mobile workshop. Now, I believe that there are results from this. If you look at the last four years since this initiative has been created, our high school graduation rate has gone up four consecutive years. And, and in fact, we have consistently moved up. We are now 14th in the nation. If you like education statistics, we're 14th in the nation Arkansas is in our graduation rate. Now, why has that happened? I might not be able to prove it uh, through data yet, but anecdotally and through logic, I tell you, I believe that our graduation rate has increased because we have given young people options and hope and an understanding that they can fit in through an education path that will lead to a good paying job. And I think that's what this has done, and that's a success story. Simultaneously with this initiative, the state has invested uh, in additional career education centers for our high schools. When I became governor, we had 54 high schools that did not have access to a career education center. Because once they see this mobile workshop, it leaves town. They have to have an opportunity to have their dream fulfilled, and that is through our career education centers. And there, where there were 54 high schools without a career education center close by, that has been reduced down to 10, and our goal is to eliminate it all so that every high school student has access to a career education center. <laughs> the need continues. We're going to continue to create jobs in Arkansas. We're going to continue with our industrial partners to expand our existing businesses and, and uh, workplaces. We're going to recruit industry just like CZ USA and Sig Sauer and others here to Arkansas. We're going to continue to grow our economy here, and we have to be able to demonstrate to those prospects that we have a path for a skilled workforce. This is the beginning of that path and the demonstration that we can fill the needs of industry in our workforce. I want to assure you that you have invested in this and the state will continue to invest in it. We have legislators that are here, our senator is here, I see others that are in the audience, and they support workforce education. And I very likely will come to you in the future and say we need to invest more. Whenever we see this success and the greatness of the need, if we can get this right, then our future is secure. We want to get this right for our young people, and be pro, be proud is a key part of getting it right. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Governor. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. My name is Chris Caldwell, uh, and I'm uh, with the uh, Delta Regional Authority and very proud to uh, uh, share the stage with these great leaders and, and uh, to have our agency be a partner in this great program. Um, I just spend a lot of time in the workforce development arena. Um, I've uh, been chewed on by Senator English more than once, as everyone else has here. But this is a, a term that gets thrown around a whole lot. Uh, people come and ask uh, me for money for grants for workforce development, and it's just we, we slap it on. And it's really frustrating to someone that uh, spends a lot of time in distressed and impoverished areas with high unemployment and high uh, 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 dropout rates and, and across every metric. Uh, and when I first learned of this program, uh, I was still in Senator Bo Bozeman's employee uh, about four years ago. Uh, in 2016, Andrew Parker called me and said, I'd like to come by your office and, and, and tell you about something that we were doing. And I think my immediate reaction was is, we've got to show this to Senator Bozeman. And I remember we, he assembled some of his board and some of his partners and we met back at the chamber headquarters and, uh, uh, and presented to Senator Bozeman this program and you know it wasn't too long after that that the truck was here and Senator Bozeman convened the whole delegation to come to his office with Senator English and Andrew and Randy to present this to the administration and the Secretary of Labor. Not long after that uh, Senator Bozeman got so tired of me that he got uh, the president to uh, nominate me the DRA so he could be done with me and I was walking uh, in a meeting in, in the White House and an official at the Department of Labor stopped and was like, hey, you were in that meeting a couple years ago, Senator Bozeman's office, that be proud, be proud. He's like, yeah, he goes, I want you to know that like, after I saw that, I've shared that all over the country because that's true workforce development. That's an intention. This is, this is we're, not, we're, not, we're not training people uh, in, in, in soft skills. These are hard skills that are going to relate to a job. And, you know, one thing that I learned in, in my eight years of working for Senator Bozeman was uh, uh, teamwork and alliances. And he was, uh, I won't say any quotes that he said because he'll probably quote Frank Bowles at least twice while he's up here. But uh, to me, when I came to DRA, and, and Andrew called me about version two here that really and truly, you know, sold me on it uh, was that I knew the need and I believe in the program because I've seen it, but it's all the list. It's that private industry and in leading that because I have to answer to these appropriators for every dollar. And when I'm just a fraction of what you private industry has done, I think that's a good place for me and anybody else in the government to be is listening to you, the people hiring people, the people making products, and the people that are driving this economy. And so I'm very proud to, uh, for our small role in this. Uh, I'm very proud to uh, have continued the relationship with this from where it started with Senator Bozeman. But there's nobody, in, in my opinion, that is better at bringing uh, uh, people together for a greater good like this than Senator Bozeman. So if you could please welcome Senator John Bozeman. Thank you all. It's great to be with you. Andrew gave me a tour of the uh, display. And I didn't really know what to expect. I'd certainly spent time in the other vehicle. So I go in there and, and uh, I can't imagine it being any nicer. So congratulations, Andrew, and uh, all of you that have worked so, so very hard to make this a reality. What I learned when I was in there is that I had a natural affinity for being a backhoe operator. <laughs> Some of you wish I would go ahead and do that. <laughs> but it's great to be with you. And this is all about jobs, jobs, jobs in the economy. As I go around the state, uh, and I've spent the last four weeks going around the state, four and a half weeks, 
that's all I hear about. We're blessed. We've got a low unemployment. But in order for us to go forward, in order for us to create new jobs, we have to have the workforce to sustain that. That's a great problem uh, with the low unemployment rate. The, the recipe, now government can't create jobs, but it can create a situation where the economy can grow and thrive. And you do that by keeping taxes to a minimum. Certainly we need taxes. We have to have taxes for governments and things like that, but they don't need to be burdensome. And then also, along with that, is keeping the regulatory atmosphere. Same deal, we need regulation, but keeping the regulatory atmosphere to a minimum in the sense of letting, uh, not being uh, hampered with regulation for regulation's sake. And the good news is the governor, the legislature has done a great job of that. We appreciate you very, very much. Uh, record unemployment, uh, low unemployment, uh, that's a great thing to tout. The, uh, this is so, so very important. The, uh, this is about Arkansas moving forward. And so we talk about a lot of the problems that we've got, and we do have great challenges, great opportunities in the state. And it is everybody working together. At the federal level, we were able to pass the reauthorization of the Perkins Bill. That's the, the money that comes down for a lot of these programs. It's so, so very important. President Trump signed it into law. First time in 10 years that we'd, we'd been able to reauthorize it. Lots of added flexibility. That's a good thing. And the good news is we hear a lot about the dysfunction in Washington. It's really dysfunction every place. But this is not a Democrat or Republican thing. This is something that we all agree on something where we can come together and make great headway, which we are. French is doing a tremendous job in the House, uh, being, uh, I want to get this right, co-chair of the Skilled American Workforce Caucus. I know it was the Workforce Caucus, but, but uh, you know, again, advocating, working with his Democratic colleagues so that we can get things pushing forward. So we appreciate you. Uh, congratulations to the Chamber, Randy. Uh, we appreciate your leadership. And uh, working together, uh, I look forward. I don't know that we could. I usually say I look forward to coming back and, you know, five years we're going to have a better whatever. I can't imagine a better display than this. So, again, uh, congratulations. And uh, we appreciate all of your all's hard work because I know that the people represented here are the movers and shakers throughout the state. And that's really what it's going to take is all of us working together as we go forward. Thank you very much. I'm not certain, but I don't think I introduced Attorney General Leslie Rutledge. Did I not? Thank you. Better late. Okay, so in legislative circles, uh, the comment is, well, everything's been said and everybody said it. So I think that's where we are right now. Thank you very much for coming out and expressing your support for this uh, uh, challenging but absolutely satisfying and worthwhile effort that's underway. We appreciate all the partners. We appreciate all the policymakers and leaders in the state that are supporting and encouraging it. Now, um, take a shot and uh, take a look and at least walk through uh, the new Be Pro, Be Proud 2.0 workshop. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate you being here.